me just share with you one of my favorite verses from Zephaniah 3.17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness and he will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. And let's all sing nice and loud as we sing together. How can I keep from singing?
Well, thank you so much for being here today at Bethany Baptist Church. It is good to see each and every one of you this morning. And uh, if you are live streaming with us this morning, perhaps for the very first time, uh, it is my privilege to take an opportunity and take a moment to welcome you uh, with us here into the Bethany Sanctuary. Uh, we hope that uh, you will take a moment uh, to um, uh, uh, just leave a uh, post, let us know um, uh, that you're there this morning, and again, thank you so much for joining us. If, uh, if you're new, one of the things that we give to people who join us at Bethany who are new, perhaps when you visit in person on a Sunday, but we can do this uh, digitally this morning, is, um, is we make available a free subscription to what's called Right Now Media, and we would like to do that for you this morning. You're going to find the information here on the screen right next to me, and uh, you can simply use your cell phone and text right now B B or right now Beth B C uh, to four one four one one and that will begin the process. You'll get a free subscription of thousands of videos, digital media for you to use during this time or any time. The subscription again is a gift to you. We've got somebody who's going to share a little testimony about using it, and so let me direct your attention to the screen. Good morning, Bethany. Pastor Ruben asked me to talk to you about right now media. Uh, which is a resource that you might have been overlooking the same way I did up until recently. Um, they're an online video streaming service that provides all different types of Bible studies and devotionals. Um, so if you haven't checked them out yet, I encourage you um, to go on their website and check them out to see what they have. Um, it's something that has really helped me these last few weeks um, as we're at home and confined and in quarantine. So take a few seconds, go on their website, check out what they have, and I know you will be blessed. I hope to see you all again very soon in person, in church. Take care. Bye-bye. If you haven't started your subscription yet, let me encourage you to do so. Thank you so much for uh, Karin just sharing that word of testimony about how that's being uh, a blessing for her, and we trust it'll be a blessing for you. If you're new again this morning, there are a couple of ways for you to connect with us, and uh, you can do that through going to our webpage, that's bethanygardner.org, and uh, if you visit the Contact Us page, uh, there's different ways for you to get information, leave information, and so uh, we hope that you'll do that and let us know uh, where you're coming from. The other way is to post to comment this morning as you watch on Facebook and uh, as we live stream. This comes to you live each Sunday morning. Uh, it's not recorded. Uh, when I was uh, in youth ministry years ago, we used to do these kinds of things with VHS. Do you remember what that is? And uh, the group of students that did that called the group One Take Productions, One Take Productions, simply because it was so expensive and not a lot of people did it. We didn't have time to go back and redo it over and over and over again. And so we just got one take. So on Sunday morning, you're getting us live, you're getting us uh, somewhat rehearsed, and uh, we just love coming to you this, uh, uh, these mornings and encouraging you and hopefully build your joy for the week ahead and, uh, and give you some encouragement if the week behind you was tough. So check out the webpage if you would, or leave a note here on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. We also want you to be aware, uh, particularly if you're a regular part of the Ministry of Bethany, of ways that you can give during this time when we're not meaning, meeting together, when we're social distancing. So, uh, as always, you can uh, mail uh, your offering, uh, your gift to the church at BBC Ryan uh, Street, 72 uh, Gardner, or you can use the bill pay or the EFT feature of your online banking, and uh, the check will be automatically mailed to us, and uh, that supports the ministry here. If you're joining us for the first time this morning, you're not a regular part, this is our gift to you, and, uh, and we are so glad you've chosen to be with us this morning. We also want you to be aware of following the service this morning. There's an opportunity for us to uh, enjoy a little virtual community, talk about the message, just check in after the week. And the way we do that is on zoom.us, that's Zoom video conferencing. So zoom.us, and our meeting room is the number at the bottom there, that's 808-311-5639. And so if you go online, zoom.us, join a meeting, and then put in the meeting number, you'll join us, and we'd love to see you there at 12.30 this afternoon. 
Finally, uh, if you know of anyone who needs assistance or during this time is struggling, maybe they need someone to call, maybe they need help with groceries, maybe they need help with errands, uh, they're having a technology issue, um, whatever it is that's, that's going on with them, uh, we would like to see if we can help. And if you need help or you know someone who does, please let us know by contacting us and uh, we will do our very best to see that that need gets met and um, that we have the opportunity to be good neighbors during this time uh, of social distancing and the health emergency. Well, this morning, I, um, we, are, we have a special guest who's going to be with us, and uh, his name is uh, Tim Benzani, and Tim is the District Executive Minister, and there he is. I've just brought him up on the screen. Tim, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. And so, awesome. Good morning. Good morning. It is great to have you with us this morning. Uh, I have gotten to know Tim over the last year and a half, um, a little bit more, uh, as he has taken a new role and as I've assumed the role here uh, at Bethany as, uh, as the pastor. And so uh, what I wanted to do was uh, take an opportunity. He was actually supposed to be preaching here this month. But uh, because of all that's going on, that did not happen. And so uh, we thought this would be an interesting way to kind of bring him and introduce him to the Bethany family. And then he's gonna come at some later date and, uh, and share the word with you. And uh, we look forward to that. But Tim, just take a second if you would, tell us a little about yourself, uh, just, uh, just personally, uh, tell us about it. Okay. Well, first, good morning, Reuben, and good morning, Bethany Baptist Church and Gardner. It's a privilege to be with you uh, through these means. I would rather be with you in person, but I'm sure you're thinking the same thing. You would rather be with each other in person. And uh, so it's been my privilege to serve as the executive minister for Converge Northeast for a little over a year. Um, I, I joined Converge uh, January of 2019. And uh, before that, I served in local church ministry for almost 25 years, first in the Boston area and then here in central Connecticut. But just a little bit about uh, uh, me and my family. Um, my wife, Sharon, and I have been married over 30 years. Uh, here's a factoid that you, you, you may want to file away. We met on a blind date and it worked. Uh, so, yeah, we've been married for 30, a little over 30 years. We have two adult children, uh, Colin, uh, who is married, and uh, Caitlin, who is finishing her senior year at Gordon College. Now, maybe like many of you, uh, our kids are actually home with us. So we were empty nesters, and then uh, we, we kind of figured out how to be empty nesters, and now we're not. Uh, so we are enjoying our kids being home. Um, but before ministry, I worked in business for about 10 years. If you're familiar with a retail chain uh, store called Marshalls, I worked at their corporate headquarters in Andover, Massachusetts before being called into full-time ministry. But it is my privilege to serve you and our local churches now with Converge. Yeah, Tim, you've, um, you've transitioned out of if you would, the secular world, business world, into uh, church work and, um, and working in uh, a church, and I believe uh, down in Connecticut, uh, was the last church that you were serving before you started as the district um, executive minister. Tell, tell us, just so that we're aware, what exactly does the district executive minister, what is, what is your job now uh, with churches in the, in the Converge Association? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Ruben. And uh, so really, if you think about it this way, my, my responsibility is to serve the local church. Uh, we, are, we are different than other uh, denominations. We're technically not a denomination. We are an association. We believe very strongly in the autonomy of the local church. And so what my responsibility is to, is to come alongside you. Uh, to the pastors and leaders of the local church to help us uh, uh, bring, first of all, care and connection, and then secondly, bringing resources to help each leader and local congregation fulfill the vision that God has called you. It's, it's not what I say you must do, but what is it that God has given you uniquely? And then I come alongside and say, hey, now, how can we discover that more fully? 
And how can we then advance what God has given you, how to impact your local community? And then thirdly, it's to unify our movement of churches. We, we have over around 100 congregations in uh, the Northeast states. And so it's really the how do we rally uh, as a movement to reach the region for Christ? Yeah, now, and, and let me just say for, for uh, in appreciation to you, and so that, so that my people know, Tim has been excellent at reaching out and connecting with and staying uh, on top of the different things that are happening uh, in our local churches. I've appreciated regular emails from him, uh, the occasional phone call. We've gotten together uh, to break bread together, and, uh, and it's just been wonderful to have the kind of support that Tim provides uh, to me as a pastor, and then through me to our local church. This is, though, Tim, a pretty challenging time for our local churches. And with regard to COVID-19, uh, the, you know, the health emergency pandemic, that type of thing. Can you just say briefly what's going on in New England, in, in our region, amongst our churches, uh, yeah. with regard to well, that? Well, yeah, of course. Uh, first, I will not forget the day I was actually meeting with a group of our leaders uh, uh, on Cape Cod uh, on March 13th. 12th and 13th, we had a couple days. I had a couple days of meetings, and and literally everything began to hit at that point. Where the, the state of New York, state of Connecticut, state of Massachusetts were all going into uh, the almost the shelter in place uh, regulations. And so I was, I had at least 20 phone calls in those two days from pastors asking Tim, what what should we do? Uh, because again, it wasn't as strict at that point to say should we meet, should we not meet. So really, that began. Uh, what I call the kind of three phases that we went through. And many of you have experienced this the same way. And so phase one is just reacting. Phase one was the news broke and we had to make a pivot. Uh, and as you have done in Gardner, it's saying, how do we move our uh, worship services, our discipleship, all of our ministries uh, to an online mode? Then the second phase was when the U.S. government and the states were really talking about uh, government assistance in terms of the CARES Act and the Payroll Protection Plan. It's getting information to our pastors. And so really those first two phases were, were providing resources, providing information. And then I want to also say is underlying that, it's not, not just what we needed to do and how we needed to do it, but then asking our pastors and leaders, how are you doing? Uh, because with that pivot, what, what I noticed was our pastors and leaders were working harder than ever. And many of you are experiencing this as well. I just read something this morning that said there is a fatigue that, that many folks are getting by being online. And it's called um, uh, Zoom fatigue. <laughs> and so while with this, this technology is awesome, People are fatigued by being online uh, for hours after hours. And so I think that, again, part of our human soul is we long for that, that physical connection. We long for being in the same place. And likewise, uh, I did over 30,000 miles by car last year. And while I have to say I don't love the drive, what I do love is at the end of the drive. And what that means is when I had the privilege of connecting with our pastors and leaders face to face, as Ruben said, breaking bread together. And, and so it, it, this makes it difficult. So really what I'm trying to assess is how are our leaders doing? And then now the, fa the third phase of this is, is now looking to the future. What does ministry look like uh, post COVID-19? When, when quote unquote things get back to normal, uh, whatever that normal looks like. And we're beginning to have conversations to say, okay, so how, how is it going to look when we go back, when we're able to meet in even smaller groups and then larger groups? And, and so that's really what I'm trying to do and, and to help our churches adjust. Hmm. I mean, that's a tall order just on a regional level, just to connect with, with the people you're responsible for. But we recognize that, that Converge is, is part of a larger association of churches, uh, certainly nationally, and then through, um, uh, through, pardon me, I had somebody try to connect with us. Um, oh. There you go. Nothing like uh, community. Um, but, um, uh, but also on a national level, how is what's going on regionally here connecting nationally and what's going on nationally that's feeding back into us uh, yeah. here locally? 
Yeah, so I think I think the way the way to think about it, we have 11 districts uh, in in the United States uh, converge, and and so really what this is doing at the national level is uh, our district leaders are connecting almost daily. Uh, passing resources, connecting with one of whether it's text or phone call, and then our national leaders, uh, President Scott Rideout and his cabinet, uh, they're reaching out to us, whether it's from a church strengthening standpoint. And so really the flow is is the national leaders to the district level and then the district leaders to uh, the local level. And it's really working remarkably well. In fact, uh, when we were in the midst of uh, this massive pivot, I had the opportunity to connect virtually, of course, with the denominational leaders in the Northeast. We have a pretty tight group of, of uh, leaders in the Northeast. And, and we, as we were in the middle of this, I began to share what our national leaders and what we were doing at district level to respond. And, and many of these, these different associations and denominations were remarking, wow, our, our national offices have not yet responded in that way. And so I was able to share things that our national office was doing with them in order to help them resource their local churches. And so now going forward, that's really the model is that, for example, uh, uh, President Scott Rideout will pass things along to us, and then we then break them down and, and communicate to the local leaders. Yeah, I know that one of the things that happened, I believe it was Good Friday, we were able to participate in a, a regional, but kind of a, a flowing, ongoing prayer uh, prayer meeting that kind of you know started here on the East Coast and then went west, if you would, uh, with some of uh, the association leaders. Uh, and we were able to log on and be a part of that prayer time and be led by them, which was a which was a blessing. How can we, as we kind of bring this full circle now, how um, how is it that we can be praying for you? Yeah, thank you. And and please know that that my wife and I pray for each of our congregations and our con uh, pastors. Uh, we have a list that I kind of rotate through and, and are, I'm praying for our local leaders. Uh, but in, in terms of prayer for the, the district ministry is I think that, that you know, of course, is how to be effective in this season of ministry is, is that as I uh, provide uh, some, some group types of resources. So for example, this coming week, we're doing a district wide Zoom call uh, to check in with our pastors. I'm following up on individual phone calls and really trying to detect how best can we continue to serve so that, that we're effective. And then the balance of providing information and resources, but most importantly, uh, spiritual leadership. Because in this time, particularly, we need to be concerned about how are we doing spiritually? Um, as your pastor is concerned for you spiritually, I want to be concerned for our local leaders. How, how is their spiritual health? How is their emotional health? And how is their physical health? Wow. Um, can we take a second to pray with you now while we have you in line here? That would be awesome. Thank you. Okay. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for bringing Tim our way this morning. Thank you so much for... Um, for his heart for ministry and his heart for the local church, uh, for his heart for pastors uh, and, and local leadership in churches. Lord, we, we recognize that this is a, uh, an incredibly challenging time for ministry as uh, many churches uh, retool uh, themselves and minister in ways that they weren't uh, used to or hadn't even thought about ministering to uh, before. Um, and so uh, uh, we pray and we ask, Lord, first for Tim, that, Lord, you would just give him grace and strength as he helps churches navigate these times. Uh, Lord, uh, we pray that you might uh, help him uh, in, uh, in consulting, the, in encouraging, uh, in praying with, in reaching out. Uh, to local churches um, that are uh, in the midst of some pretty uh, large, almost seismic types of shifts in ministry. Lord, we pray that, um, that you would cause him to be an encouragement to them, that Lord, he would uh, continue to move them towards joy in ministry uh, during tough times. Father, we pray and we ask uh, as we move towards, as Tim has said, a, uh, in some measure, a new model of ministry, uh, in churches, God give wisdom, we pray, as he uh, seeks to, to work with these churches. 
Lord, I pray for him that, Lord, you would protect him from fatigue and just from uh, getting uh, just Zoom fatigue, from connecting across the miles. Uh, and Lord, uh, like so many of us, just desiring to be in community uh, and to be together. Lord, we thank you so much for uh, the role that he plays in, Lord, our region. And Lord, that he is able to play for us uh, nationally as part of Converge. Lord, we uh, pray and we ask your richest blessing upon him today and each of the days which are ahead. Thank you for his ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tim, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you, Bethany. Blessings. Well, thanks so much for staying with us this morning and um, uh, again, uh, just connecting with. And some of you from Bethany were trying to connect in on the Zoom call uh, while it was going on. That wasn't necessarily meant for you, but I hope you enjoyed it. You can connect with us in a little bit as, uh, as we have that opportunity to, uh, to kind of go into the pastor's study and just um, uh, kind of uh, decompress, if you would, and share a little bit about the week uh, which uh, is behind us. And so, uh, so we're going to uh, take a moment uh, now to uh, uh, just continue in prayer, and um, then we're going to... And then we're going to uh, turn our attention to the word. Let's pray together again. Father, thank you for this morning. And Lord, um, we, uh, we thank you for allowing us to meet together. We thank you for uh, the opportunity to uh, connect with, uh, with Tim and uh, to learn a little bit about what's going on just outside of our little pocket here in North Central Massachusetts in Worcester County. Lord, uh, we do pray and we ask that God, you would be with churches like ours that are, um, Lord, uh, taking next steps in terms of, of connecting and in terms of uh, being good neighbors in a digital way to the people in their communities. I want to thank you this morning and praise you for, uh, for each and every one of the people that, uh, that help the ministry of Bethany continue even at this time when we're not able to meet together, for members of our worship team who uh, um, help uh, us put together a, a time of encouragement each week, for our audiovisual guys, uh, for our office staff, for those who are involved uh, with boards and committees as they connect through Zoom and email. Lord, we. Uh, we thank you that the ministry continues. Thank you that we are able to be a part of what's going on in our community, that this past week we were able to um, minister to the people uh, and the staff uh, at Haywood Hospital, um, Lord, through delivering a meal and, and a card of greetings and of uh, well wishes and of prayers uh, for that staff there as they care for people. Lord, uh, we are praying and asking God that you would help us to determine and help us God to uh, creatively become uh, good neighbors uh, and to make a difference in our community. And so Lord, uh, help us as that happens, Lord, uh, near our homes, in our homes, and Lord, through this, um, this uh, lighthouse uh, that we call Bethany. Father, we recognize that today some who listen um, are, are hurting, that, um, that Lord, perhaps they're, they're struggling with um, with anxiety or fear or stress or loneliness or just all of the things that go along uh, with being separated. Lord, we, uh, we pray and we ask your blessing upon them and that this moment together uh, would be an encouragement. Lord, help us, uh, Lord, in thinking about good neighbors to be the people who celebrate community, as we talked about last week. Help us to be extending our community through a phone call or through a card or through, um, Lord, uh, an email or a video chat. Lord, uh, just to let people know that, hey, we're thinking of you, we care for you, uh, we hope that everything's all right. How can I pray for you today? Lord, some of us uh, and are part of our fellowship are struggling with the loss of loved ones. Lord, we think of the Spencer family today um, and the passing of uh, Aunt Maddie. We think of uh, the Singletary family. Uh, we think of, uh, Lord, um, uh, so many who uh, continue to, uh, 
uh, just go through this this grieving, but not as as we have prior. Uh, Lord, for uh, the Spencers again in the passing uh, of a pastoral friend of them, uh, uh, Ed uh, Newhouse. Uh, Lord, we pray for those that are in the hospital, members of the uh, uh, set of Demio family. And Lord, uh, we pray and we ask your blessing upon each of those. Lord, for those who are recovering from surgery. And Lord, um, Lord, we pray and we ask that, uh, that you would continue to give grace and healing to them. Father, we, uh, we recognize that many are um, touched personally with regard to uh, COVID-19. We think of um, uh, Shirley Peabody this morning. We think of uh, other members of the, uh, the Singletary family. Uh, Lord, we pray and we ask that God you would be with them and that, Lord, you would uh, encourage them. For healthcare workers connected with our church, we pray that, Lord, you would keep them safe and you would allow them to be a blessing to, um, to those that they minister to on a regular basis. Lord, uh, we pray for first responders, for uh, our EMS, for police, for fire workers, uh, as they are on the front line of connecting with people and uh, dealing with people in a public community way. Um, thank you, God, for their servants' hearts and for the way that they, they care for us. Lord, we pray in the midst of this that spiritual things, spiritual fruit would happen. Lord, we pray that uh, you would grow us during this time. Uh, even as Karen Bump uh, just gave her brief testimony and encouragement, Lord, help us to find, uh, when we have those extra moments, help us to find ourselves in your word, to be growing in that, um, to, uh, to be drawing uh, uh, energy from your word and spiritual encouragement for our daily walk. Lord, we pray that you would revive us each day and that Lord, through us and through the work of your spirit that we would see revival um, uh, as, as people are, are just drawn to the ends of themselves uh, and find their, their greatest fulfillment in you. And so this morning we look to you and we look to your word. Uh, we open our hearts with music and are encouraged. And so now as we look to your word, we pray and we ask that you would speak to us um, uh, again uh, in a mighty way. In Jesus name, amen. Well, we are glad that you're here this morning, and uh, we are uh, going to take a few minutes to look at God's Word together. And so um, uh, this week we forwarded to you the program for this morning, and it has some information in it that was available on our Facebook page and then also through our Friday email. And uh, one of the items that was there was, uh, was not only our prayer guide, but also the message guide for this morning. And I uh, want to invite you to... Um, to be using that and to be uh, following along in that way as, uh, as well as on the screen. One of the things I do want to mention is on the back of the message guide are some daily devotional uh, helps that will allow you to, uh, to take uh, the message each week just uh, another step. Um, and it will help you uh, figure out some, uh, 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 some things that you can do to apply the message uh, to your life uh, during the week and we want to encourage you to use that uh, building spiritual strength section uh, there on the back also. Well, the series of messages that we're in right now is called Kaleo. And I uh, just want to welcome you back uh, to week two of this series as, uh, as we look um, uh, at this, this particular topic. Kaleo is a Greek word, as I said last week, and it's the word for called. It's the idea of to be called. Um, in uh, 1 Peter in chapter 1, uh, Peter shares there uh, that they were called to certain things. And so we're exploring some of those things that God has called us to, uh, things that we don't want to lose track of, things that we want to be reminded of, particularly during this time of distancing and this time of, of COVID challenge. And so uh, last week we started and saw that the first thing that we're called to is community. And that is one of the things that we're really hurting, even as, as Tim shared this morning. Uh, one of the things that's just so hard is, is not being able to enjoy community and being together as we're used to. Uh, we're not able to rub shoulders and to give a hug and to shake a hand and, and to just express the warmth of relationship 
um, that comes from community, particularly Christian community. And so as we talked about community, we saw that, uh, that, that the kind of community that Jesus calls us to is, is an extreme kind of community. It calls for extreme commitment uh, to his word and to living life together and to breaking bread and to prayer. But that when we live out this extreme kind of community, there is incredible reward, there is great result from it because that kind of community is incredibly infectious, it is contagious to people around. And people see that and they, and they want to be a part of it. And so community was the first thing that we saw. The, the second thing that we saw and are, are going to see today, um, number two, if you would, in our study, is, um, is that we want to gain an understanding of our calling to generosity. Uh, we're called to be a generous people. Um, God, in fact, is calling you to, to be very generous. Um, for new people, you might say, oh, my stars, I can't believe that I have joined our, the stream this morning, and, um, and this is like the worst week. The guy's going to talk about giving. Um, and, and you're like, I can't even believe this. And so if I look at the, the analytics of this stream uh, later today, and I see that all of a sudden it goes, Ooh, I'm going to know it's because I, I brought up the topic. But one of the things that I can say is, is the good news is that I have not shared a message like this since I've been here at Bethany. And that, that's been a, more than a, a year and a half now. The, the bad news side of that is that I've been saving up for more all of that time. And so, so now I get to, uh, to share it briefly with you this morning. But I want to look at a scripture that maybe you hadn't noticed before. And it's on your handout if you're using it. But if not, it's on the screen. And it's uh, some verses from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. This is what it says. It says, For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgiving to God, while through the proof of this ministry they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. And by their prayer for you, who long for you, because of the exceeding grace of God in you. And so what's going on here? As, as Paul writes to the Corinthians, he's saying that there is, there is something that's going on here that is leading to inc incredible joy, that's leading to, to, to overflowing worship and praise. And one of the things that he's saying here is that, is that this praise and this excitement and this joy is happening because people are being generous. They're being generous. Their generosity in giving to God and to his people has led to great joy. We are called to be a generous people. Kaleo, to this you are called. You're called to be generous. And so today's transforming truth is this, and we're going to unpack this briefly in the next few moments. It is generosity is never about what you have, but about your heart. Generosity is not about what you have, it is about your heart. It's not about money or things, it's about your heart. It's a reflection of the heart of Jesus. Jesus said this over in Matthew chapter 6. He said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Does it, does it drift towards the material things, or does your heart drift towards God and your relationship with him? We're called to generosity. We're called to put our hearts in the right place. Now, if we get passionate today about giving, and many of you are passionate about giving, and let me thank you so much for staying faithful during this time uh, to the ministry at Bethany. A number of you have also been incredibly generous in terms of things that you're doing with your neighbors, things that you are doing with regard to ministering and helping at the hospital by making masks, by making extensions for, for the masks uh, in the back, uh, for delivering food to your neighbors, uh, all different kinds of things. Um, but there, let me just say, as, as much as I am encouraged by the generosity, there's no more generous individual or person than Jesus Christ himself. And we see that in John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, God needed and needs to continually change my heart with regard to being generous. It is very easy for me to be self-focused and to be selfish, if you would. 
But every time I reflect on the generosity of God, and every time I reflect on the giving of God, and I think of Jesus himself, and, and the fact that he gave his life for me, it kind of changes my heart, and, and it puts me in a different place. It gives me a different focus. One of the things that, uh, that it, uh, I started to do a long time ago was, was, was called rounding up. And it was something that I just, I had learned about and I said, I, I want to grow in my generosity and in my giving and so I'm going to start rounding up. Now many of us, we tend to round down, do you know what I'm saying? We, we, we tend to, you know, all right, well I'm going to work to, down to this as opposed to rounding up to that. Uh, when you give a gift, round up. When you're in a restaurant or, or, and the bill comes and you have to leave a tip, let me encourage you, round up. Sometimes we think about the least that we can do and a, a response to the generosity of God in our life is, what is the most that I can do? What, how can I round up in this? And so today, let me, let me just give you three different levels or places of generosity and share them with you briefly today from Scripture. And the first is this, is that generous people start with the tithe. Now, I'm not going to get into a deep discussion with regard to Old Testament teaching and law and New Testament principles and commandments and those types of things. But what I want to do is I do want to start with the idea that generous people need a place to start. And from my perspective, with regard to Scripture, generous people start at the tithe. What, what do we understand here? The basic place of giving for the believer is really this place here. We see it over in Leviticus chapter 27. It says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. What is this tithe that they're talking about in this agrarian society? What is it that, that's being talked about? Well, the tithe is actually the word maasar. It's the idea of tithing or one-tenth. It's the idea of 10%. 10% of everything in Leviticus belongs to God. And, um, you know, if we don't, we will see that, you know, one of the things that's, that's going on here, when, when we don't give to God what, what belongs to him, what we find is, is that in, in, a, in a word, and this is the word I'm going to use because I think it's the most appropriate, is that, is that we are actually robbing God. We are stealing from him. Um, I came across an illustration, This is, uh, and I'm just going to read it to you because I thought it was interesting. It takes place in a church. It says, the man, um, uh, you know, a man approaches another man in church uh, about giving to the church and meeting a need there. And the guy says, well, you know what? The thief on the cross, he never gave and he went to heaven. And so the man asks, you know, if he would be willing to give to a mission downtown and a ministry downtown. And he says, well, you know, the thief on the cross, he never gave to a mission downtown. He never gave to anything, and he still went to heaven. And the man asks, well, would you be willing to give to, you know, one hour of time? Would you be willing to give your time to the church and serve in a particular way? And he says, well, you know, he says, the guy on the cross, he says, the thief on the cross, he never gave his time. Uh, you know, he never served anywhere, but he still went to heaven. And uh, finally, he says, you know what, you're right. He says, that thief on the cross, um, you know, but there's a difference between you and the thief. The, the thief on the cross, he was a dying thief. Uh, but the problem with you is that you're a living one. And, and so we need to really think about and, and I, I'm, I'm being pretty bold here. We need to think about our generosity and we need to think about what we do with our resources and how we connect them in with the work of God. Jesus said it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Over in scripture, it says the tithe belongs to the Lord. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings. And so, so what are the principles here with regard to this, with regard to tithing? There's, there's actually two that I'll share this morning. And the first one is this, is, is tithing shows that I put God first. That when I take, when I take that, that, that initial amount, 10%, whatever it may be, some portion, when I make that the amount that I'm going to set aside for the work of God, it, it means that I'm putting him first. Over in Deuteronomy 14, it says, And you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide, the tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil, of the firstborn of your herds and your flocks, that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. It's a reminder to put God first. 
It's, it's, it's a reminder to put him in that primary place, that ultimate place of and position in our lives. You know, and so, so what do we do whenever we, we, we set aside that amount and we pull that out and, and we do that in order to put God first in our lives and in our, our, um, in our home, in our church. Over in Malachi chapter 3, the verse continues, bring all the tithes into the store that there may be food in my house. The Old Testament storehouse really is a picture of the New Testament church. And, and here it says that there may be food. And so when you bring and when you, you give your tithe, when you give your, 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 your gift to the church, what you're doing is you're making sure that there is food, spiritual food here for people in the form of ministry and in the form of work in our community, in the form of, of creating a movement of God that, that allows Jesus Christ to be shared. And so when we do that, we put God first, we put ministry first, we put the message first, and we put his connection with our community and the work of Christ here first. The second thing is not only does, does it put God first, but tithing, it strengthens my faith. Some of you may be in a position of saying, man, I could not do 10%. I could not, I can't do, maybe you need to work on adjusting your finances and creating, creating a situation where you move towards this. But tithing strengthens our shaky faith because we can watch God bless in the midst of our faithfulness. This is a great verse here. And if you would, this is a verse where, where God is saying, and this is how I'm going to put it, God's saying, give me a shot. Give me a shot. Over in Malachi 3, he says this, and try me now in this. Give me a shot, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. In connection with what's going on here, he's saying, you know what? What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to bring in your tithe to the storehouse so there can be food. If you would, in our sense, you're supposed to bring your gift to the church so that ministry can happen, so that lives can be, can be changed, so that things can be happening in our community, so that teaching can happen and ministry and encouragement can happen. And he says this, and give me a shot. If you're faithful in doing that, don't be surprised if I do not pour out blessing in your life. It puts God first, but it also strengthens our faith because God works in response to that. And so generous people start with the tithe. The second thing I want to suggest is this, is that generous people move to this next step of, of giving beyond that, to, of willing. They don't do it because they have to. They move to do it because they want to. There's a willingness. They give to other ministries. They give over and above. They, they give not just an, a tithe, but they give an offering. They give a gift, if you would. They, they minister to those outside of the church, outside of their local storehouse. They give to missionaries, and, and they give above. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or, necessary or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. He loves people who give hilariously. Who just love to just give and just be a blessing to others uh, who, who are willing givers uh, you know not scrooges who do what they have to do but people who give openly who not only give if you, your, your, your coat but they give the shirt as well they give the shirt as well this verse here describes the willing the willing giver it's a chapter before it's actually chapter 8 in Corinthians there, it says that in a great trial of affliction and abundance of their joy and their deep poverty, it abounded in the riches of their liberality, their great giving, their willing giving. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. Freely willing. These people in Corinth and these, these people that Paul is talking about here, they gave as they were able and even beyond so that the work of ministry could happen. Level one is the tithe. Level two is, is to be that cheerful giver, that willing giver. But level three is where I think God really wants us to be at and where God really would like for us to get to. And it's here in this place, number three. Generous people, we're called to be generous people. We're called to be generous in our tithe, in our willingness, but also to give sacrificially. This is for the exceptionally generous person. Not just out of abundance, but giving until it hurts. Giving till it hurts. You know, when, when things, you know, were bad for God's people, 
Um, you know, and, and David wanted to worship God and offer a sacrifice. We see uh, over in the Old Testament that, that he wanted to, uh, he goes to a man and, and he wants to have a place to, to do this. And, uh, and he goes to uh, Aruna. And this is what he says. It says, the king said to Aruna, David says to him, no, but I will surely buy it, this land, in order to make the sacrifice from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to my Lord, my God, with that which costs me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. He says, I want to give, David says, but I want to feel it. He says, I want to feel it. I don't, I don't want to just do what I have to do. I don't want to just do, you know, okay and, and give willingly and with a cheerful. But I, I, want to, I want to feel this. I want to go above. I want to give sacrificially. When's the last time that you gave, if you would, sacrificially? You gave and it hurt. It hurt. You didn't get just give out of your abundance. You gave beyond the abundance. The tithe, the willing giver, the sacrificial giver. You gave and you felt it. It's not about money. It's not about things. It's about our heart. During this time that we're walking through, this is really a time to, that challenges us in our generosity. We're challenged in our community and our relationships with others, but we're also challenged in terms of how we're going to respond with what we have. Not just, not just money or things, but our heart. How are we gonna use our resources? How are we gonna reach out to people around us? Are we gonna do what we just need to do? Are we gonna do above that and, and do it cheerfully because that's great? Or are we going to be the kind of people that God calls us to be to step up to that sacrificial level? That level that, that goes beyond the, 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 just the general call that God has on our lives. In Mark chapter 12, we see an example of Jesus. And Jesus was watching people. Jesus was a people watcher. I don't know if you're a people watcher. But Jesus was watching people in the temple. And as he was watching people, he noticed that there were rich people who would come and they would give their like super huge checks. They would make their big honking gifts, you know, and, and they were just, uh, you know, you know uh, they were just doing the big things. But in this story and in this particular experience, Jesus recognizes that there is a widow. And the widow comes in and she has basically nothing. Um, there's no one to support her. And, and she gave her tithe. She gave, she gave out of what she had. Um, in fact, she gives only two pennies, the scripture says. But she gave more, Jesus said, than anyone else because she gave out of her poverty. She gave sacrificially. And so today, how are you going to meet the needs around you? Not just the need of, of, of our local ministry, but the need of your neighbor, the need of our community. Will you do that as a tithe? And will you, are you going to do what you have to do? Or are you going to give cheerfully? Or are you willing to step up? Because God has called us to generosity. God has called us to community. Are you going to step up and give sacrificially? Is, it, is that, what, what's the next step for you today? We're called for generosity. And so how will you surrender today? How will you, how will you make available what God has given you for his work locally, globally? We're going to close our time this morning, and I'm going to invite the worship team people to come back up onto the, uh, onto the platform. But uh, we're going to close our time this morning with an old hymn, familiar one, uh, I Surrender All. And as we think about generosity this morning, the thought is, God, how do I take my next step? How do I reach a place where I'm not just giving, but I'm sacrificially coming to a place where, where I'm willing to give and to surrender all I have for you? Let's share in that song together.
thank you so much for being here this morning at Bethany with us. We hope we've been able to encourage you a little bit and to uh, give you uh, some joy and some inspiration for the week that's ahead. In a little bit, about a half an hour, 45 minutes from now, we're going to join the pastor's study. Again, we invite you to do that. That information um, uh, is uh, on our Facebook page and um, is also in the newsletter from Friday. And so join us if you would. We'd love to have you there to just uh, kind of unpack a little bit uh, of some of the things that we've spoken about this morning. Prayer meeting on Tuesday evening, as well as men's Bible study, that information is available for you. And uh, we trust that you will continue to connect and to stay connected uh, during these days. Our benediction this morning, just very quickly, uh, may God give you peace and may the God of peace go with you. Blessings, and we'll see you soon.